Very grateful for the turnout. I know it's not an ideal time of day. Uh, well over a year ago, this is in December of 2010, I had the honor of being appointed the first woman president of the University of Connecticut. <laughs> I never get tired of saying that. I never thought I'd be fortunate enough to lead such a fine, beautiful university. My parents, very poor growing up, were lucky to even attend a public university. So to lead such a strong university is very special to me. Today is a good opportunity, now reaching the close of my first academic year at UConn, to reflect on what has been, I think, a, a terrific year for all of us who care so deeply about this university. One of the best people, I don't know if he's here today, now that it's dark, I can't see any of you, uh, so kind to me um, starting and, and before I arrived in Connecticut is our own Professor Bruce Stave. Uh, who served us very well from uh, the history department. We were as a faculty member for decades. And he took the time to write a fabulous history of the university. And I really, I read every word, and um, it took me a long time. Uh, and of course, I tried to learn from the triumphs and the, the challenges and problems that past presidents have had here at UConn. The university is fortunate to have had so many excellent leaders. And I walk in their shadows. Nearly every day I wonder, what would President Jorgensen or President Babbage think of us now? Uh, would they think I'm on the right track or not? One thing that's on the right track is taking down those mobile buildings near the Benton. <laughs> that's our most historic part of campus, and, and the buildings have bothered me because I do think that we need to preserve um, the most beautiful historic part of the campus as best we can. But uh, all of our past presidents who loved UConn tried to make it a better place, tried to make it more academically rigorous and more progressive. Uh, so we have to continue on in their memory and with their values, even though our world seems a lot more complicated in 2012 than, than their world seemed to us now looking back. Every member of our community is responsible for our continued success and our continued growth. We have many amazing faculty to thank for the enormous strides they've made in groundbreaking research and scholarship. Their work inside and outside of the classroom are at the heart of what we do here at the University of Connecticut. We're equally as fortunate to have so many passionate alumni and friends of the university who weigh in often uh, and, and are eager to help us to shape the future of the university. Our staff from across UConn bring their positive energy, serving our student body and the larger community. Without our dedicated staff, so many of you here today, from facilities to residential life to financial aid, UConn would simply crumble. They're the backbone of the university, our staff, and I hope our students and faculty see this clearly every single day. And our extraordinary students, now more than 30,000 strong, demonstrate their ambition and their commitment to excellence, reaching for ever higher levels of achievement with every passing year. The fabulous work that all of you do on each of these fronts, from research and, and, from research and teaching to service and learning, make the university a tremendous institution, the one it is today and reflects the future that lies before us. My first year here has exceeded every one of my expectations, offering much more excitement and fulfillment than I could have anticipated. Without a doubt, I'm indebted to all of you across the university who have made me, as well as my family, feel so welcome here in stores. I am immensely proud to call UConn home, and for good reason. This is a university that has so many strengths intellectual innovation across nearly every discipline, faculty distinguished on the national and international stages across fields, phenomenal students of so many varied interests, stellar athletic teams, superb service to our local communities, facilities that have grown leaps and bounds over the past decade from the start of the UConn 2000 program uh, through the extensive renovation projects that we see around us today, including our soon to be downtown store center. And most recently, of course, UConn's ranking among the top 20 public research universities in the United States. And the list goes on. Clearly, UConn is evolving and evolving very rapidly. Yet, you'll be surprised to hear me say, and, and I do it fairly often, that UConn can't do it all. No great university does everything well. And in light of a tough economy and recent budget constraints, we simply can't afford to do everything. But we can plan strategically around our strengths and build on them going forward. So it's this vision of the future that I'd like to outline for you today. 
Our progress in becoming one of the leading public research universities in the world relies on four areas of focus, the first of which must be student success. Each year, the university sets out on its search for the best and brightest, most talented students, those who are most likely to excel here, who bring their own unique strengths to our institution, and who will represent UConn well in the world long after they graduate and leave us. This is no small task. Our incoming class for fall 2012 serves as a perfect example. The number of applications is booming like never before. Although we will ultimately admit a little over 4,500 freshmen for the fall, our task is to narrow that down from more than 30,000 applications, a record high this year. Even over just the past two years, the volume of applications has jumped 36%. As the number of applications rises, the selection process at UConn gets increasingly difficult, but the results keep getting better and better. The evolution of our student body is proof of just that. For instance, take this past fall's incoming class of UConn freshmen. 82% of these students ranked in the top 25% of their high school classes. Their SAT scores now average well above 1,200, higher than ever before. And they're increasingly diverse. This past fall, the university had 208% more minority freshmen than the freshman class that entered in the fall of 1995. To join the ranks of the very top tier of universities, we need to continue promoting these levels of achievement and diversity. And we also need to offer the best possible support to all of our students who have come to exemplify UConn's standard of excellence. This is not true only for our undergraduates, but across our graduate programs as well, which continue to flourish. I told the, uh, the Graduate Council yesterday that there would be a shout out to graduate students because it's so necessary here and at other research universities where faculty and undergraduates get so much attention, but graduate students who are just as important um, do not always get the attention that they deserve. UConn's graduate applications and enrollment have steadily increased in recent years, just as the undergraduate applications have increased. The programs themselves have grown in prestige. Kinesiology and psychology, EEB, are examples of the sort of outstanding offerings that today attract students, graduate students, to our campus from all over the world. As I said, graduate students are so vital to this university and any other research organization. They're so very underappreciated. They help professors to teach well. They teach themselves independently. And most important, they're the future professoriate for America. In the summer or during school breaks, they are here. They're the few people that you see walking around the campus during the breaks, learning, inventing, and becoming the brain trust for the future of our country. There is no doubt that we're becoming a school of choice for some of the most competitive students in the United States. They're seeking us out for our nationally ranked academic programs and for the many creative learning opportunities available to them here at UConn. This is great news, but in order for our students to reach their full potential, we need to attract larger numbers of high caliber faculty who can inspire success and inspire the love of learning, which is so important to us here. The extraordinary growth that UConn has experienced in student enrollment has in fact outpaced the growth of the faculty. We are working very hard to remedy this gap, as you know. By fiscal 2016, UConn is poised to add nearly 300 new faculty members to its ranks. This is a significant draw, jump, one that is absolutely essential to expanding our capacity for exceptional teaching and research over the coming years. UConn is actively working to recruit some of the nation's most prominent professors and researchers. This is what the deans are doing practically every day right now to add to our already exemplary faculty. This effort is focused on boosting not only the numbers of faculty, but also the diversity of our university experts from across our schools and colleges, from engineering and medicine to education to the arts. So many advantages come when you invest in our faculty. Greater no faculty numbers mean a lower student to faculty ratio in the classroom. It also allows the university to expand course offerings ultimately providing more students with the opportunity to graduate on time. As we've seen, attending for more than four or five years here at UConn at the undergraduate level represents a substantial additional cost to our students, so we'd like to avoid that. At the same time, 
bringing a large new no number of new faculty on board will have a dramatic effect on the university's overall research capacity in years to come. As one of the top public universities in the country now, UConn is and should always be striving for great distinction in research, which is the second area of focus I want to bring to your attention today. I've already pointed out the need to build on our greatest strengths, and here at UConn, research is obviously one of them. Today, external research awards for our university and health center exceed $200 million, a significant increase in total research awards from just five years ago. We hear the news, I hope you hear the news, of UConn engineers, hydration experts, ecologists, linguists, all carrying out studies in a number of diverse subject areas here on our campus in Connecticut, as well as on far-flung continents. Yet, at times, it can be easy to gloss over the idea of research without really having a true grasp of the astonishing implications that much of it will have, the research happening here on our own future and on generations to come. Just over the past year, UConn has witnessed some extraordinary developments on the research front. Here's just a handful of projects underway. It was very hard to write this speech to pick out um, just a few projects when we could go on all day. But let me talk about a few because they make our research performance and achievement much more vivid. Professor Tim Hunter is an expert in digital animation design and production. He's leading UConn's Interdisciplinary Digital Media Center. Here at his center, students and faculty in fields as diverse as medicine, engineering, and business work closely with artists in our School of Fine Arts to create innovative digital visualizations of their research. Through creative 3D animation, they are transforming complex research data into visually stunning digital media. Professor George Sagai is one of the country's foremost authorities on emotional disorders, behavioral problems, and positive behavior support. At a time when our schools are under mounting pressure to increase test scores, Dr. Sugai's evidence-based research shows a definitive link between academic achievement and school environment. His research has been so widely cited that he was invited to host the 2011 White House Summit on Bullying Prevention by President and First Lady Michelle Obama. He has also provided several congressional briefings on safe school climate. George has been the project director or co-director of major training or research grants totaling over $25 million. Quing Zhu, a professor in our School of Engineering, is developing an advanced, non-invasive form of medical imaging designed to improve the detection of certain cancers. Her research in this area could reduce the number of costly biopsy procedures performed each year, lead to potential savings in healthcare costs, and detect cancer earlier and more accurately than any other method available today. In Yukon's Center for Health Intervention and Prevention, researchers from both our Stores campus and also Farmington are leading efforts to intervene in the realm of human health. Across Africa and Asia, they're saving lives by designing and implementing strategies to, pre to prevent the spread of HIV AIDS in at-risk populations. These are just a few, very few of, groundbreak of our groundbreaking research um, projects taking place here across Yukon. Many of them demonstrate the level of close collaboration taking place among our campuses and across disciplines. Each of them reflects the incredible value of research in solving real-world problems and improving quality of, the quality of life for citizens here in Connecticut and across the globe. Fortunately for the state of Connecticut, we have leaders and legislators in office who recognize the incredibly powerful impact that research like this can have. Without a doubt, research advances our understanding of the world around us. It can affect our lives directly and indirectly, leading to everything from more innovative medical treatments to cleaner energy sources to more effective ways of allevi allevi alleviating poverty. Even beyond that, research can also inspire economic growth in the form of new products and, in turn, new partnerships and new companies. This is now part of our mission as a public institution, a public research university. We have the resources and the intellectual capital here at UConn that it can help to contribute to the strength of this region now and into the future. Many of you are familiar with the buzz around Bioscience Connecticut. Many of you here have worked on it very, very intently. This is the $864 million plan championed by Governor Daniel Malloy. 
that you've heard so much about in recent months. This major investment in our university health center will result in a new hospital tower, renovations to lab space, and other major improvements to the Farmington campus, all of which will now allow us to continue to offer top-notch medical care to our state's residents. But in addition to that, Bioscience Connecticut is also poised to jumpstart Connecticut's economy for the long term. It will promote innovative research collaborations between our campuses and with outside businesses and industries. Bioscience Connecticut will help shape the state into a more productive, more profitable leader specifically in the area of bioscience, creating a world-class hub, much like the research triangle in North Carolina. Our triangle just, uh, for those of you who haven't been listening to all the rhetoric, is Farmington Stores, New Haven, uh, because of all of our collaborations with Yale, now and to come in the future. But we hope to generate jobs, as well as sustained economic growth based on research, on entrepreneurship, and commercialization. As part of the larger bioscience initiative, UConn has also recently had the great fortune of establishing a new partnership with the internationally renowned Jackson Laboratory. Jackson is a leader in genetics research and in the field of individualized medicine. Soon it will be launching a billion dollar project on our health center campus in concert with our scientists and our clinicians. This partnership with Jackson Labs is truly a game changer for the entire university and the state one that will, we foresee having a profound impact on the region even beyond Connecticut. At the same time, we also have our sights set on the Yukon Tech Park. Uh, we we're gonna have a better name for that. Um, and, and some of our students and faculty are working on that. But we expect it to be up and running here on the Storrs campus by 2015. Like Bioscience Connecticut, the Tech Park is designed to spark the development and commercialization of new ideas, from manufacturing to advanced product development. With flexible use labs and highly specialized equipment, it'll bring together UConn's own world-class scholars and researchers in partnership with industry scientists and entrepreneurs. Here, we'll be able to usher our faculty's discoveries into the marketplace. We'll see their ideas and their research findings translated into the creation of novel devices, new licenses and patents, revolutionary manufacturing processes, and a wealth of highly skilled jobs and pioneering new companies. I want to reiterate just how crucial these efforts will be for UConn's future. Every one of these initiatives is nothing short of transformative for this university. We're eager to serve as the go-to institution for industry and entrepreneurs here in the Northeast. Partnering with them, we can build long-standing research relationships, collaborate on developing technology, establish thriving new businesses, and help to solve the critical challenges facing the citizens of Connecticut and the world. UConn possesses so many gems. We have leading experts in all these diverse fields, pharmaceutical development, vaccines, advanced materials, energy management. In these and other areas, we need to work deliberately to market the exceptional level of innovation that's so abundant here at the university. In short, when it comes to research and economic development, UConn is open for business. All that said, it should come as no surprise that I am incredibly energized about what's in store for us. UConn is not only very well prepared to build on our greatest strengths and become one of the world's finest public research universities, we're also enjoying a remarkable sense of momentum today. Yet, as a public university, we must recognize a simple truth. Sustaining this level of momentum can be a challenge in the face of competition. You know, as well as I do, that we are working tirelessly to attract talented faculty and university leaders. We're vying for outstanding undergraduates and graduate students from across the world. And we are continually competing for federal and philanthropic support. On every one of these fronts, the competition remains extremely fierce. And add to this the financial reality that UConn's operating budget has in recent years endured significant cuts from the state. The investment that the state of Connecticut has made in our university from the tech park and stores to Bioscience Connecticut and Farmington have been extraordinary to have these kind of investments at this time in the American economy. 
We are enormously grateful for this. It's rare at a time when so many other public universities in the nation and private universities have endured uh, problems in their budgets and decreases in state funding across the board as well as federal funding. State support has dropped and now stands as just 28% of the university budget. This decrease in state support is unlikely to reverse direction in the near future, so we should probably get used to it. Bearing this in mind, you may understand now why philanthropy is an area that remains absolutely essential to our university's future. On the forefront of our university's fundraising efforts is our UConn Foundation. The foundation is in the midst of a capital campaign that has, in fact, passed its midpoint, passed it uh, last December, raising upwards of $300 million in private support for the university. To date, total fundraising performance is up over 40% from last year, 40%. In the first half of fiscal year 2012, the foundation achieved a fundraising record, raising more than $25.1 million in six months. This is all great news, but we can do a lot better. I've said before that a university of our size and our stature and our ambitions should have an endowment that reflects its strength and its excellence. Reaching the $1 billion mark, that's where we should be in terms of our endowment, uh, is not beyond the realm of the possible, and it's certainly in line with the endowments in place at other public universities of similar rank. Building our endowment to this level means having the capacity to offer excellent programs and services that will best serve our current and future student body. It will protect our university against the ups and downs inevitably that you see in the economy. In essence, having a growing endowment ensures our future excellence for the long term. And as is the case with everything else we do, we will never just settle for average or okay. We have to keep pushing on the philanthropic front even though it's difficult in these hard times. But even with all of our promising initiatives on the horizon, even with our rising strength in academics and our growing powerhouse of a faculty, it's not a time for complacency or modesty. It's a time for action, a time to advocate on behalf of a tremendous university that each of you has helped to build. I spoke at length today about student success, about research and economic development and philanthropy. UConn's future depends on our ability to deliver in every one of these key areas. But our future also relies on our ability to make the world beyond UConn aware of the fact that we have earned the right to compete on the national and international stages. The bottom line is that we need to communicate our message of excellence and ambition and do it well. With the invaluable support of our alumni, our university community, the state of Connecticut, UConn has transformed its campuses, engaged exceptionally talented students, and distinguished itself with the kind of outstanding academic programs that are typical of the very best universities in the country. Whether you're faculty, staff, student, parent, alum, friend of UConn, each of you has in some ways served as an ambassador of this great institution. You've helped to shape our evolution as a university. I want nothing more than to see us push this university forward on every level in coming years. We're in an exciting place on the cusp of reinventing ourselves to become one of the top public research universities in the world. In the coming months, you will begin to hear more about our brand, our unique identity as an institution. I have charged our leaders from across the community in a committee to join forces with the goal of pinpointing exactly what lies at the heart of our great university. Putting into words what UConn stands for, where we outshine our peers, and what makes us tick presents a valuable opportunity. When we articulate our unique brand promise, we effectively take the reins in showcasing our most exceptional strengths. We can actively reinforce what sets UConn apart and bring to light what attributes and accomplishments have perhaps gone unnoticed but deserve to be recognized. Now bear in mind that when I say brand, I'm not talking strictly about a tagline or a logo. Uh, we're a large, thriving, world-class university. We're at the top of our game. We're rich in history. We're brimming with promise. No single slogan or new showy graphic would ever convey all that we embody as an institution. 
Yet how we perceive ourselves and what we understand to be the essence of UConn can help transform how we present the university to the world. We want to be able to capture the attention of superb students, prospective students, spark the imaginations of brilliant researchers, and make clear to all Americans our value at UConn to the nation well into the 21st century. If we fail to connect on any one of these levels, we do ourselves a disservice. Think of the Googles and the Apples of the world. They may not operate in the realm of higher education, but we may still learn from their success. They're widely known for what they do and where they excel. They deliver on their brand promise with consistency. The CEO of Amazon, Jeff Bezos, said it well, quote, a brand for a company is like a reputation for a person. You earn reputation by trying to do the hard things well. Though we may be spread out across Connecticut and far beyond with UConn's alumni, researchers, students situated around the globe, I ask you to continue doing the hard things well. I know we have the passion for it and the pride for it. I see it in our university community every day, and it's been evident to me since the first time I set foot on the campus. We can lead in many ways, and while it takes passion and incredible dedication to teach and to discover, we do need to be led by our values. When I'm long gone, I hope people will remember this period as one of scholarly excitement, progress, and international impact. But what would make, what would make me most proud is if this were remembered as a time when we made progress on our values, particularly civility and diversity. We have so many people and projects focused on these profoundly important ideas, from the planning of our fall civility metanoia, said it right for the first time, uh, to our search for a diversity leader in the provost's office. Let's not lose grasp of these two concepts, civility and diversity, as we march forward, because we're not a proud university or a decent university unless we pr prioritize civility, tolerance, acceptance, and the great change that comes with building a truly multicultural community. Over the coming months, I look forward to working with many of you to turn your positive energy, your knowledge, and your dedication into further success and growth for our great university. Many thanks once again for a fabulous and inspiring year, and I'm sure I'll see you all before that, but looking forward to a great summer. Thank you.